This is the CNC Router Tips Podcast, episode 65. When I got back home, I was saying, and the whole time I was there, I was saying, this is the perfect project for me to do with this acorn board that, I, that I've had sitting waiting because for the last couple of years, I've been a little bit too busy to start a new project. This is the CNC Router Tips Podcast, a show which answers one question from you, the listener, about CNC router tables, CNC software, hardware, web hosting, and business. I'll help you get started in your CNC hobby or business and help you cut through the confusion. Today's episode is sponsored by TheMakersGuide.com. The Maker's Guide. Useful tools for makers. Hello and welcome to another episode of the CNC Router Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Griggs, and I am so excited to be back behind the microphone making these podcast episodes because it's been a while since I did them consistently. And so, you know, we're getting started again and putting out information that we hope that you will find useful as you uh, go on your CNC journey, whether it's a router table or a, a milling machine or a lathe or whatever this kind of information is going to be useful to you. And that's my hope. So last time we spoke last week, I mentioned that I would be talking about the uh, Centroid CNC Acorn CNC controller. I was fortunate. I got one of the first controllers that came out uh, from them uh, when they announced this project. It, when, when it first uh, got going, they had a, a special on the boards and I saw it and I saw the features that it had and how uh, it would, you know, be able to plug in and interact with other things and that it had software built into it that would also drive the CNC. And so I, I uh, got out my credit card and I ordered one. And uh, I was planning to tell folks about the experiences that I had with it because um, when I bought the card. I didn't really have a project in mind for it uh, initially. And that's, you know, that's not unusual because I do a lot of CNC projects over the years. I mean, I've done a uh, four axis CNC foam cutting machine for making wings for my model airplanes. Uh, I've done a, a CNC router table that we built from scratch. A couple, a couple of those actually, quite a few. I upgraded a Grizzly G0704 milling machine to CNC, and right now I'm currently working on another project uh, with a CNC lathe. So I knew eventually that I would have a use for this controller. But, uh, you know, the thing is, I got lucky one day. I was looking on the uh, Facebook marketplace, which is a really cool place to find things that people are selling. And there was a fellow in Rochester, which is not really very far from here, about an hour and a half, actually, from where I live, who was advertising a Rhino ST6 CNC lathe uh, that he was going to sell for a ridiculously low price. And it was a big surprise to me when I saw this. Um, he listed, in fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and tell you what he listed, uh, this machine for you. So, you know, just what an unusual and, and bargain that this was because it was really, really totally unexpected. So he had this, um, lathe, which was designed for use in schools to teach, um, students how to use CNC and it's a lathe that was designed in the nineties. So it was DOS based. Okay, so, you know, imagine all those old electronics. He had been storing it in an unheated shed and um, not using it very much, and he listed it for $300. So I gave him a call and um, took a ride out to Rochester. And when I walked in, uh, he, he immediately discounted the price to $200 because he needed to to, to move it. And I didn't ask him that. He just did that voluntarily right there on the spot. So I did that uh, transaction and um, we stuck the uh, 
the lathe in the back of uh, my uh, car and off I went. Well, when I got back home, I was saying, and the whole time I was there, I was saying, this is the perfect project for me to do uh, with this acorn board that, I, that I've had sitting uh, waiting because, you know, for the last couple of years, I've been a little bit too busy to um, start a new project. And, you know, I, I thought about doing a laser cutter. I thought about doing another smaller uh, CNC router, maybe um, uh, whatever. But the lathe was the perfect project to take that uh, acorn board and do it. And so I began doing the research and trying to find all the components and everything that would work with this board. And, uh, you know, it has its own software. Um, so it doesn't use Mach 3 like um, most folks are, are used to that uh, we've talked to. It uses its own software, which is industrial level, because um, Centroid CNC also makes uh, their own machines for the uh, auto folks who are doing automotive things. And uh, they use this software on everything they make from the Acorn or the uh, Oak, which is a, another controller that has more features. And then uh, the, the top of the line is the all-in-one CNC. So they use that software across all of them. Centroid's CNC12 software, which is um, CNC software that will drive the board and, and give you a user interface that you can um, interact with. There's a, a, a mill version, a lathe version, and there's also a router version of the software. And uh, you can choose which version that you want. But um, if you want to take advantage of all those, uh, the full functionality of it, there is a, a, a more professional version of the software that is available for an additional fee. And um, many people will, will will upgrade, but you can run some software, uh, some programs with what's included. So at any rate, the board that I had, uh, I got it all plugged in and all of the parts are, are working. And I decided that I would pair it up with a, a couple of these new closed loop stepper motors, uh, which, and, and drivers, which I was able to get. Everything works fine. And these closed loop stepper drivers are really cool because they're very silent. They run very cool. And, uh, you know, I think that they, well, I'm not going to make the statement that they have a little bit more power, but they seem to. Um, I'll have to withhold that statement until I can get a torque reading or something like that. But um, it's been a nice uh, experience. So that's a little bit of the backstory. Let's talk about some of the things that the Acorn did and does. And if you want to check out uh, a really in-depth podcast that we did a few years ago. I had Keith McCulloch on from uh, Centroid CNC, and we talked quite a bit about uh, the Acorn, the development of it, and, and what it does. And you can um, listen to that episode by going to cncroutertips.com slash 54. That's episode 54, the number 5 and 4. So it's cncroutertips.com slash five four and that'll take you to it it's called centroid acorn do-it-yourself cnc controller with keith mcculloch and there's a lot of information there but the acorn is a four axis controller in other words you can plug four motors into it so on a typical router table you could have an x a y and a z axis and then uh, perhaps the A axis, which you could, in some cases, you could slave it so that you could have two motors driving the long gantry of the uh, the uh, gantry around, or you could use that fourth axis um, on a rotary table if you only have a router that has um, three motors controlling the X, Y, and Z. So, you know, right off the bat, it will it will do that, and it will take um, a wide variety of stepper drivers. For instance, you could get a Gecko G540 and plug that in, uh, you know, and that's 
for a four axis driver system um, and, you know, use it just to output the step and directions to each one of those. And um, you could use some clear path servos, which are, you know, a closed loop servo. You can control the spindle of your um, router or mill or, or what have you and use an encoder to feed that back so you, so you could know you know what rpm or speed that the um, spindle motor was traveling at or the position depending on you know which encoder you had um, but you have a you know a nine pin socket on this board that will accept an encoder which you could attach to the motor so that you you know the that information about it so that was a really cool feature and it was something i didn't have currently on my router but you know i, I intend to have that if i switch over to an acorn controller there is a built-in motion control cpu on this thing it's um, a beagle bone cpu controller that's in uh, got an AM335 1 gigahertz ARM Cortex processor. It's an A8. Uh, controls up to four axes, is a step in direction, and uh, they're open loop. There's uh, eight inputs and eight outputs. There's one encoder input, one analog output for uh, zero to 10 volts or from zero to five volts depending on what you need for your variable frequency drive control it has a pulse width modulation output for using lasers or spindles or that sort of thing um, it has an onboard motion control cpu and ethernet communication to the uh, cnc pc and it's uh, designed for do-it-yourself self-service tech support it retails for 329 dollars and that price includes a uh, dual voltage power supply and ethernet uh, shielded ethernet cables so anyway that's a lot of jargon to say it's a really smart and fast little processor very small and the acorn is also a breakout board all in one so you can plug in your limit switches you can plug in relays you can plug in all sorts of things um, and it comes with at least the uh, the new ones do uh, a relay board that has eight relays on it uh, that plugs right into the main board of the acorn so you can turn things on like your oiler your vacuum table you could turn on the spindle you could turn on the dust collection with it or or uh, um you know if you were running flood coolant you could turn that off and on you could uh, switch off contactors or solid state relays and that sort of thing anything that you could use as an on off in an on off situation you can control with that relay board as long as you know you can keep the amps uh, that you're using in, in the appropriate range and the acorn board also has a power supply now the first version that i got came with a um, 24 volts i believe it was power supply i'd have to check that um but uh the newer version which i'm going to talk about in a second comes with a dual power power supply so it has both 24 volts and 5 volts on that so you can run uh, different logic levels things um, through that power supply and it comes already pre-wired so you just take the the plug from the uh, power supply and you plug it into the uh, uh, the acorn main board and you plug the other end with the ac line on it into you know wall socket you know, it runs off of regular um, one uh, 120 110 uh, volt um, power there's really not a whole lot that you've got to run out and get. I mean, um, it came with the um, Ethernet cable, because this is an Ethernet board. So you can plug this shielded cable into the um, that little processor board that I told you about, 
and you plug the other end into your computer and run their, their software after you've downloaded it. And so that allows you to send signals to the motors and move things. And it's, it's really quite, quite an interesting setup. There's pretty much everything that you need to hook up one of these is, is, is in the box. They don't give you things like limit switches or, or, um, or that sort of thing. And it's up to you to provide wiring to your motors, to the board and to some of the other components from the relay board. But other than that, I mean, it's, it's ready to go. And I think the current pricing is today's episode is sponsored by the maker's guide creator of the triple edge finder. Get the edge you need. Save time and frustration on your CNC project and make setup a snap. Save time and material. Set up your workpiece on your CNC router table faster than ever. Accurately set your Z-axis height first time, every time. Automatically locate the corner or edge of a workpiece. Reset your starting point in the middle of a program. Quality crafted right here in the USA on US-made CNC machines. Get the edge you need today. Go to www.themakersguide.com forward slash edge. The Maker's Guide. Useful tools for makers. Pretty much everything that you need to hook up one of these is, is, is in the box. I think the current pricing is $329, which is a really good value for, you know, all of those things. So anyway, the older board that I used, all of the connectors were soldered directly to sockets on the board. And now the new ones have removable um, sockets, uh, which are really nice because I can plug, I can wire something away from, you know, the board where it's easy to manipulate the wires and I can see them and, you know, got the connector in my hand and then I can just plug in the entire connector and I can connect five or six wires at a time doing it that way uh, on this new board. So this new board is, is really fantastic. Now, when you compare the, um, the things that uh, I had to add to my older board, for instance, I had to go out and get that relay um, card and a special adapter to use it. But that comes standard in the new Acorn drive. And so, you know, that's a big deal to me. On the old board, I had to go out and upgrade to uh, a power supply. I had multiple power supplies going into this thing, and it was kind of messy wiring-wise. This new power supply, just plug it in. It takes care of everything that I need from there without me having to go out and buy another power supply because these things start adding up. I'm really looking forward to experimenting with this new board, and um, I'm trying to decide right now whether to take the one that I've already got wired out of the lathe and put in the new one or to come up with another project for this new board. And that's probably what, um, uh, what will happen. Um, but I don't think I'm going to take quite as long to do it as I did the first time. One other thing very quickly that is uh, different about the new versus the old board. The old board had a, a row of connection pins for wiring things to the two onboard relays that were on the, the board of the Acorn. Now, the new one still has those two relays, but now it has this eight relay setup that comes with it. So it's a, like a daughter board, but it's got a very small connector that you just plug directly in because that connector is now on the board and they eliminated that entire row of headers because they don't need them anymore because the relay board has them closer to where the action is. And in that respect, the, the board is, is a lot lighter and, um, uh, than the old board, but I, I don't think, um, the weight is an issue because this is such a tiny board. You can fit it in pretty much, um, any situation. If it sounds like I'm overly, um, enthusiastic about the acorn, I don't believe that's the case because it works. It worked from the moment I, I hooked it up. And, um, 
the cool part for me is that whatever components I chose to use with this, if it was a commonly available component, there was a schematic available to use it on the um, Centroid forum. Now, Centroid has their own forum. It's called uh, CentroidCNCForum.com. That's uh, where you go for that. But there is a, a knowledge base on there. And inside of that knowledge base, there is a list of common configurations. So if you wanted, for instance, to do, to have a CNC router with Gecko G540 stepper drivers on it and a uh, Huan Yang or however it's pronounced variable frequency drive and, and a uh, um, high speed spindle. There's a schematic for that already laid out. It shows you where every wire goes. If you wanted to do clear path servos, there's a diagram for that. If you wanted to do DMM servos, there's a diagram for that. If you wanted to do standalone lead shine stepper drivers, there's a diagram for that. And it's, it's all there for you to download in PDF form. In fact, there's so many of them on there that it, it sometimes gets interesting just looking through them. I know I, I look through, I spent quite a bit of time just flipping through trying to pick out the things and seeing what components I already had that I could just wire in. And it was, it was fantastic. The guys are very good at helping. You know, earlier I mentioned Keith McCulloch and I'd like to give him a shout out on this episode because I really do appreciate him sending this new board. Um, but, also, there, there's, a, there's another fellow who does YouTube videos who talks about, you know, his conversions. He specializes in converting old, old machines, converting old machines to use the Centroid controller. If you want to check out Marty's CNC Garage as the name of his YouTube channel, if you just type that into the search bar, you'll find a ton of videos of, of Marty showing you how every component goes uh, in with this uh, acorn and he's he's a master at um, converting these machines and the the wealth of information he puts out is is just fantastic and I, I really do thank him because he helped me with um, something I was having difficulty with in the lathe project way above and beyond the call of duty so thank you also if you are on Facebook. They have a um, Facebook group called C Centroid Acorn Unofficial. And there are a lot of folks there who um, do things. In fact, um, there is one fellow, Zeev Gubb, who um, posted a picture of one of the control boxes that he developed using the uh, the acorn. And uh, it was it was a work of art. It was beautiful, and I, I wanted to give him a shout out as well because uh, I thought his his work was immaculate. And I typed him a response and I, or into when he posted the picture. I told him I thought it was great, and I wondered if he would post another version of the the picture where he put in text captions of what each component was that he had in the board um, had inside of this control box. And he did it. And it's nice because anyone can look in there and see, you know, what the components are so they can recognize what they look like. Then they can go and figure out if that's something that they need or want to add to their setup or if it's, you know, overkill. Because I know there are a lot of components that you don't necessarily need to add sometimes, but adding them makes for a safer, more efficient machine. And, you know, they're, they're highly recommended. But again, most people don't know what the components look like, where they go, what sort of thing. But this acorn is designed for do-it-yourselfers, folks who want to build their own CNC machines. And so it's very helpful to see that. So I'm going to do an unboxing video this week of the uh, new acorn board, which I have received. And I will post a link in the description of this 
podcast so that you can go check it out. And I'll probably embed the video in with the show notes as well. The, you know, the show notes are just the, the landing page of where you will find this episode. In this case, this episode that you're listening to now, you'd go to cncroutertips.com slash 65, because that's the number of the episode we're on, episode 65. And it will have all this information, and it'll have links to the Centroid website. It'll have links to... It'll have links to the closed loop stepper uh, drivers and motors that I'm using and other components um, uh, that I'm using with the Centroid uh, Acorn. So if it's something that is at all of use to you, it'll be there. Now, another thing I'm looking forward to showing everybody and to sharing with everybody in that video is I 3D printed some mounts that will allow me to mount the um, acorn components and a few of the other components that I'm using in my control box to DIN rails. That gives me the ease of insulation. I can, you know, move components around if I want to just um, unclip them from the rail, move them over, uh, rewiring things. It makes it just so much neater and so much easier to do. And, um, I plan to post those DIN rail mounts to uh, not only my website at cncroutertips.com, but I'll also put them in our um, hashtag CNC Router Tips Facebook group as a file so that anybody who wants them could download them if they're a member of that group or they can go to the, the website and download them. And I'll probably look into putting them on Thingiverse um, too as we, as we get a chance. But it's just nice not you know, not to have um, to worry about how you're going to mount the components. It's not absolutely necessary, but it is cool. So, you know, I wanted to to tell you guys in my experience with uh, the Acorn, and it's been a very positive experience. So if you want to check one out, um, like I said, you can go to CentroidCNC dot com or you can go to cnc router tips and look for the links inside of the show notes and uh, you can check it out um, i'm not a i get no um compensation for telling you about this but i do want to uh, be fair to others and tell you that i was sent the latest board and you know i didn't pay for that but i did pay for the first one so I'm fine with that. I'm a happy customer. That's uh, that's all I can say on that. But you've got to check out everything for yourself. You've got to be the judge of whether a product will be useful for you and, you know, whether it's worth your while. I only talk about things that I like. So that's all I have to say on that, as Forrest Gump would say. This has been uh, a fun episode for me to do. I'm, I'm excited. You can probably hear it in my voice to get not only my lathe up and going, but now the potential of, of um, uh, another CNC machine in the house. So that's going to be great. Thanks to Keith McCulloch and the folks at Centroid CNC for uh, sending out the uh, Acorn CNC uh, board for me to uh, evaluate and uh, to try out. I, I do appreciate it. And um, if you want to uh, check them out, you can go to centroidcnc.com. I often mention many different types of software during the episodes and hardware and cutters, and it can get a little confusing. So what I did was I put together a page on my website, cncroutertips.com slash resources. And on that page, I list all sorts of resources there from books to tools to uh, software um, all the things that I use that make my CNC experience better and easier. And I hope you'll check it out. So again, it's cncroutertips.com slash resources. Now, if you'd like to have your question featured on the air, here's how. Need help? Ask me about your CNC router question on my podcast, the CNC Router Tips podcast. I'll be glad to help or try and get you the help you need. 
I want this podcast to be a fun and personal experience for everyone and helpful. So let's keep it real and ask sensible questions. Please use common sense and show courtesy to everyone. That way everybody wins. Here are some guidelines to ensure that your question is qualified to be featured on the show. Please keep your questions under one minute in length. If it goes a little over that, that's fine, but um, don't ramble. If you have a website and URL, you're allowed to share it, but only once during the recording. Spammy or disrespectful or deeply private questions will not be considered for the podcast. If you need to ask more than one question, just make each question a separate voicemail. I'm Bill Griggs for CNC Router Tips. I hope you have a wonderful day.